It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Here, I'm coming to you today again for the Martin County Fairgrounds. I'm in a different building today because I have a couple guests and so we had to have a little more space so we can have a wonderful uh, discussion here about quit messing with Jensen. And um, I just want to let you know Martin County Fairgrounds folks, uh, this is a, a fantastic place. We have a lot of different spaces. We just had Palm City CrossFit out here last weekend, a great big outdoor space. We have some uh, companies that are coming in for their Christmas parties. Again, a lot of great outdoor space, but we have indoor space as well, halls that can hold up to 300 people. So if you're looking for a rental place that's affordable and accommodate a lot of people, don't forget about your Martin County Fairgrounds. Also, Indian Town Marina is one of South Florida's best boat storage facilities. It's located inland on the Okeechobee Waterway. Indian Town Marina is a well-protected hurricane hull and is home to many in the cruising community. You find the facility ideally situated and very user-friendly. It also has a do-it-yourself and full-service boat yard offering the best of both worlds when it comes to servicing your boat. Electrical, mechanical, prep work, bottom painting, you name it. Indian Town Marina can help you or again, you, it's a do-it-yourself boat yard. Give the good folks at Indian Town Marina a call at 772-597-2457, 597-2457, or visit IndianTownMarina.com for more information. And real quick, don't forget, it's hurricane season. If you have not reserved your space for safe harborage, do so today because once a hurricane is named, pretty much can guarantee you you're not going to find a place in this town. So peace of mind, just have your place reserved, then you know where to go, IndianTownMarina.com. So today I have a couple guests with me that I've been very anxious to have here in the studio because, uh, folks, it's all about the community getting together. If something's happening in your community, step up, make your voice be heard, and get others involved. And the ladies that are here with me today have done just that. Uh, to my far right, I have Kiki, um, I should have asked how to pronounce your name before we started, Sotek? Sotek, yes. Sotek, uh -huh. Sotek. Yep. And Alora McPherson here to my right. And uh, these ladies, along with a, another main person, uh, started Quit Messing with Jensen. So we are here today to talk about that. Uh, Quit Messing with Jensen really came to light because there's a new project out there. River Light uh, is what it's called uh, for Riverside. It's a uh, project on behalf of new urban towns for major master site plan approval on a largely undeveloped site for mixed-use development consisting of 77 multifamily and single-family dwelling units, accessory dwelling units, and a 7,000 square foot restaurant on 8.5 acre site. 5.5 of that is non-submerged lands. So part of that's water. The density is 13.79 density units an acre, and the property is in the general waterfront subdistrict of Jensen Beach. Iggy, if you can show the map of the property we're talking about, um, it's approximately 2.9 acres uh, of the site east of Northeast Indian River Drive, adjacent to Indian River Waterway, and uh, that's kind of the project. It's a, it's a lot going on there in Jensen Beach. So. Mm -hmm. Well, Laura, let's start with you. Why did you start up, uh, or why did you all start up? Quit messing with Jensen. Well, um, honestly, Kiki uh, was kind of the igniter for this group. Uh, she, she came to me uh, a few months ago, and I want to say it was May. Was it May, Kiki? It was actually six months ago in March. Six, six months ago yeah. March. Uh -huh. It was a while ago. Um, and she asked me, you know, hey, can you help me uh, rile the community? And network with this and I said you know what um, I'm really busy in real estate getting my business going and uh, transitioning well into that but I'll definitely help you network so that's kind of what I'm known for I'm a networker so uh, I was like definitely help you network so you know I helped her put the word out and I wasn't too too involved deeply at that point um, we then we had our first NAC meeting, and uh, I think that's really when it clicked. And ultimately, that's when I decided I was fully invested in this, and that um, the community needed some strong voices, and Kiki needed some solid assistance to solidify um, our movement and what we were doing. So the NAC, for those of you that aren't aware, is the Neighborhood Advisory Committee and all of our different communities around the county, the county have one. Very important, this is uh, local residents that 
really come together to offer suggestions for development or future uses of your area to the county ultimately. So um, Kiki, what made you notice something was going on? So I was actually on my way home from work one day and I saw a huge yellow sign go up. It was master site plan sign. And there's a phone number on the sign. I immediately called the number just to inquire what was going to be going in there. And I got an email a few days later and the woman from the growth management department informed me that there's a project in review and that the project needs to go through the NAC, the LPA, and then the Board of County Commissioners in that order. And I thought, how many people are really gonna stop and call this number and attend these public hearings? I was like, maybe one out of 20? I was like, I wanna make this my goal to inform the community and have them come out to these public hearings and have their voices heard. Kiki, you've done an amazing job with Thank that. You. And I'm, I'm gonna say it might have been one out of the entire community, honestly. Uh, very few people will call the numbers on those signs. So mm -hmm. congratulations Thank to you. you. <laughs> That's what they're there for. Uh -huh. and it's so important to get involved. And you you called up the county and she's absolutely right. It does have to go through all these different processes. Uh, right now it's going to be heading into the LPA uh, notification and hearing. And once it goes through the LPA, then it'll head over to the Board of County Commissioners and go through their process of approval. So. Um, we're in the middle of this project, so to speak, right now. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I know that both of you have learned a lot about zoning and regulations and how these projects come to fruition. And folks, this year, this is a recurring theme. Uh, we started talking about it during session up in Tallahassee earlier this spring. I just did a show down in Port Salerno and it's that, that dirty word we're calling SB 102, 102, the Live Local Act. And these ladies have learned a lot about that Live Local Act and how it impacts our communities. So let's talk a little bit about that. Alora, you're over here, she's like, yes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's yes. the, the um, SB 102 is ultimately um, what not only myself and us ladies, but a lot of people feel is ultimately the, the gutting of our state. Um, it ushers in these developers and uh, they no longer have to go through the county commission to get approved to rezone property. Um, it kind of bypasses the local mun municipalities and it gives them the ability to rezone parcels, um, which really ultimately is really not in a uh, community's best favor, especially these small communities. Uh, maybe it's better suited for large cities, Tallahassee, Orlando, I'm Miami, uh, but small communities like Stewart and Jensen, Port Salerno, Palm City, other, other small counties along the coast and you know, more central Florida, really over the whole state, are going to suffer from this. The big thing with the SB 102, folks, is what it's what it's done is the commercial properties that are zoned commercial. You historically couldn't have residential housing there, multifamily. You would have to go in and get permission, and it's taken that away. As long as they have a, a certain percentage of what they call affordable housing, which, folks, it's it's, it's not affordable. Um, I think it starts around 1,700 for uh, one unit, 22 or 2,400 for two bedrooms. It's it's not even close to affordable. But they have a percentage that they call affordable. You don't have to go in for zoning. You can build now multifamily on commercial lots. So you think about all your commercial lots that are up and down your streets in your local communities. Uh, instead of having that cute little storefront that we once saw and that we see that makes really these communities special, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they can now be turned into a multifamily um, residential units. And then when you have bigger parcels like what you have here, then they have the parking and all that that's affordable to, afforded to them and it changes the look and the face of these communities. So that's really what you found out. Um, interestingly, I think this project started before SB 102, but it, it's, come, it's made it much easier for these projects to sail through as well as new ones. So tell me, I know you've started a petition. Um, they have a, it's a quit uh, messing with pet uh, Jensen petition. And if you go to www.thepetitionsite.com, I have a very long link here. Do you guys have a short link for this? Yeah, it's on our page okay. on Facebook, Quit Messing with Jensen So page. if you go to Quit Messing with Jensen mm -hmm. Beach, join that group. There is a petition there. Um, 
last chance to save Johnson Beach. We have all seen a dramatic increase in development in Johnson Beach. Currently, this is happening in our backyard and threatening our small town. If River Light developers get their way, our quaint, inviting town will quickly diminish. No one wants our town to turn into an overcrowded, busy Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. We're against this development for many reasons. Infrastructure, parking, traffic, that's a big one, folks. Environmental issues, taxes, and dire consequences to the Indian River ecosystem. Help keep our small town charm. Please help us save our beautiful town of Jensen Beach. Go to Quit Messing with Jensen on Facebook and you can get a link to that petition. They need your help. Uh, it's about power in the numbers, right? Getting the community involved. Oh, yeah. And we've done that in a really unique way. Um, we knew going into this that we were going to bore people with attending an NAC meeting. Right. Most people don't even know what that is. Right. So we actually captured the community's attention through fun events. So we would hold a local concert at one of the local bars and tie in our information booth and really just try to get them informed on what's going on. And it's, it's been working. Kiki, that's actually a great way to go about reaching the people because they're out having fun. And honestly, we were talking about this a little bit before the show. Is it's difficult to reach people today and let them know what's happening because we're all so busy. Mm -hmm. and one of our few outlets we enjoy doing is going to those fun little exactly. events and going yep. in and have a little, a little drink at our favorite watering hole or what have you. Mm -hmm. So you reach people that are too busy to really figure out what's going on and what has been the response in the community? Um, a lot of people had no idea and that was our point was that they're not going to know and then once it's developed it's too late and then people are furious and they want their voices heard at that point but at that point there's nothing they can do. So I think we caught it just in time where people can actually get out there and come to these meetings and these public hearings, the NAC, the LPA, and the Board of County Commissioners, and let them know how you feel. And that's so important. And we're going to have uh, the River Light uh, representatives on here in a future show as well. So we hear both sides of the story. But Kiki and Laura, what's special about Jensen Beach? Oh, gosh. So we what? made it our mission. Um, Where do we our start? new slogan <laughs> for our movement is to preserve Jensen's history, environment, and community. And through the events, that's exactly what we're doing. We're um, getting our history out there. We're having an event next, next month. Yep. Um, actually, yeah, the end of October. October we're going to be, 27th. Um, mm -hmm. It's the pioneers of Jensen Beach. So we're having um, a guided tour on top of the hill, the cemetery, Fantastic. where yeah. all of our historic mm -hmm. pioneers are buried. Um, yeah. The pitch forts, the raccoons, Captain Henry Sewell's there. And we're going to do a little sip and stroll and just inform the community about all of our famous pioneers that developed Jensen Beach. Well, folks, I've had a lot of different groups on the, the show over the years, and honestly, I don't think anybody has had a such fun event <laughs> to get people involved as you folks. So We're having fun. That's creative. I, I absolutely learning. love it, and that's yeah. the way to get people involved. It's important mm -hmm. to get everybody engaged. It is, and mm -hmm. the history, it's so important not to forget that. So the Pitchforks, you know, uh -huh. I, I had no idea there was the, a family name yep. that was in the Pitchfords. The Pitchfords, uh, uh, the, okay. the, <laughs> the, the, the Sewells Sewell, are buried Sewell's there, point. I believe. Is that some of the, isn't Flagler buried there, some of the Flagler's buried? there or something like I'm that. I'm not sure. There's a lot of There's them, a yeah. lot of pioneers of not only the area but of Florida buried at All Saints Cemetery mm -hmm. um, which if you're not familiar where that is it's on the hill there at the fork right as you start going into Rio. So it's a be it's got beautiful grounds and honestly it's a good event because the cemetery needs help uh, gaining funds to build a fence so that's where uh, all the proceeds are going is going oh, to help them get a fence for the grounds. Mm -hmm. So, and who knows? Maybe the ghost of one of our, our predecessors here is going to pop up and say, "Hey, <laughs> it quit is messing Halloween with Jensen." Weekend. You never know. <laughs> I, know. I love that. Uh, Amy Pritchett, she's one of our Martin County School Board members. Uh, Amy, thank you for tuning in. She said, "Live local is more like." live choked <laughs> and, and it, she's right it's it's it one is. of those things where they're 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 yeah. stuffing it down our throats mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of bill for it, sure it is so what is your plan um you have the petition you're getting people involved what's your plan well um i think one of our main concerns with the river light development is uh the river they uh they have a lot of plans to add things that aren't really needed along the riverside. They want to add a shopping plaza, they want to add a restaurant, and they want to add three chateaus, um, which are three-story townhome type buildings. And 
there's really not much land there to build all of that. So in order to do that, they're going to have to dredge and extend a seawall. There's also mangroves that extend there. And if uh, people aren't too familiar with Florida's ecosystem, mangroves are very important for our ecosystem. And we are one of the few places that have mangroves. And we've already decimated so much of our mangrove population. Uh, so Jensen's very unique. We care about the environment so heavily in our community. Um, we joke around and we call it a drinking town with a fishing problem. You know, it's, 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 it's just a local joke, but everybody's fishers. Our industry is, is fishing. Um, it's fishing and people love to kayak, paddleboard. Everybody's outside. Uh, it's, it's a very unique community. We all know each other. We're all united. You can't really go anywhere without running into somebody you know, and we all stay active with each other. So when we see a big development coming in and they buy such a large piece of the heart of our town, it raises red flags as to what they're going to do with it. 5.5 uh, acres, 88 units or 80 or so units, I believe, right, Kiki? Mm -hmm. um, that is high density for such a small parcel that is at the heart of everything. We only have Indian River Drive and uh, Pineapple Ave that run north and south through the town. So a development mm -hmm. that large is going to tie up construction for a good amount of time. The River Light quoted five years. I'm going to have to go ahead and say it'll probably take longer than that, you know. So the causeway to our beach is right there. And we're not the only people that use that beach entrance. St. No. Lucie County uses it as well. So we're a unique community as we're our way to get to our local beaches. We also have Hutchinson Island. That is a unique community that frequents Jensen Beach a lot. And they don't, you know, during season, traffic's already backed up highly at that area. If you, if you don't get oh, to the... Oh, it's gotten worse this season, <laughs> as we all know. It, <laughs> since COVID, it's been out of control. Yes. And if you try to get to the beach during season, if you don't get there before 8, you're going to be sitting on that causeway for a couple of hours. So, you know, to add such a high-density unit right there in the heart of everything... On a road that's, both roads are only one way each way, so two, two lanes, that is going to really, really, really tie up traffic. You know, you worry about infrastructure issues. We don't have the infrastructure to add 88 units there or 80 units, whatever the exact number is. Um, it just, it's not possible. And then it raises the concerns of parking. Downtown Jensen already lacks parking. In season, I, I don't even go out in season because I'm driving around for 20 minutes looking, looking for a parking place. Uh, you know, sometimes Publix will allow people to park there, but e during season, that, that parking lot is full. So we're already struggling with a parking issue for our local businesses uh, in downtown. And then you wanna add 88 units, you wanna add another restaurant on the waterfront, you wanna add another shopping plaza. None of those things we really need. And I believe they said they were gonna give us 178 parking places. Mm -hmm. And something I brought up at one of our NAC meetings was, I have three cars right. <laughs> between me and my significant other and his work truck. Right. So they say that most of those units will have a one-car garage. Well, I don't use my garage for parking. A one-car garage is not much space to store things and park your car. So I imagine most of those people that live there aren't going to use their garage for parking. They're going to use the on-street parking. And they did not show us any parking for the waterfront buildings, the restaurant, the shopping plaza, those have workers. The workers are gonna have to park somewhere. So it raises a lot of concerns as to what it will do to our local businesses in downtown. You add such a large development, no parking, added density, the infrastructure can't handle it. It just, it just doesn't seem like a great idea for that land. Folks, I mean, this is what it's about. <laughs> 
you can tell that these ladies have really researched this project. Laura, you're very passionate and you're asking the questions that need to be asked. And uh, by the way, Joe Neeson, hi Joe. Uh, she's tuned in. She said, you go girl. She's very proud of you all for doing this. And, and, and Joe, we, we know where you stand. You just follow Joe on, on Facebook. Um, Amy Pritchett, sounds uh, eerily familiar, Casey and ladies, to Port Salerno. Take our ecosystem and destroy wildlife, native species, and ask the community to be happy about it. Pave paradise. So folks are definitely tuning in and watching. But Alora, you brought up a lot of issues that that's the questions you need to ask. Those are the, the concerns that will impact you. Mm -hmm. And you want to ask them before it happens and you're doing that. So I'm sure you went to the county, posed these questions, went to your NAC. What are you being told? Well, um, we've been very, Kiki and I are very busy. And mind you, I've got a nine-year-old daughter. I have a, I'm expecting another one on the way, the beginning of the new year. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> very exciting. Um, I, I'm a realtor, I'm very busy with that. And I'm not against development. As a realtor, you know, most realtors are not. I think that this development is a great idea, just not for the land that they want to build it on. I think it would do wonderful out in tradition. I think that it would be very well suited out there. Uh, but of course, they want waterfront land, right. and there's not much of that. So um, <clears throat> uh, it just. Well, what's the response? Are, have you went to the county? Is the county telling you? Have you? Well, step well, back one second. How about River Lake? Have you went to them and said we have these concerns? And have has there been a response? Um, Ike has reached out to. Well, I met Ike uh, about a month. When was that? Uh, a month and a half. A month and a half ago. Um, I gave him my card. He did not have his card at the time, and I haven't heard from him yet. He's on my list to reach out to. I have been busy meeting with local commissioners. Um, I've met with Doug Smith. I've met with Ms. Hurd, um, just to kind of get their opinion and just to meet them face to face. I've reached out to Mr. Campy, I've not heard back. I've reached out to Mr. Jenkins, I have not heard back yet. Uh, I have not reached out to Ms. Hetherington yet. So just- What about Commissioner Smith? Because that's his district. Yes, yes, okay. I've, I've met with Doug Smith. I met with him a month ago? Less than a month ago. Yeah, three, four weeks ago, something like that. I did meet with him. Um, we are actively trying to seek out and understand the processes um, and understand what can be done, what can't be done. Uh, I, I would like to have a meeting with River Light, uh, with Marcella, just to have a conversation. Um, I think that a lot can happen when you meet face to face and you discuss things. Absolutely. Um, so that is on my list. I have a, quite an extensive list that we reach out to. We've met with agriculturists. Mm -hmm. We've met with environmentalists. We've met with some of the commissioners, like I said. Historians. Um, historians. Um, news reporters. News reporters, journalists. And now the Casey Ingram show. Yeah, <laughs> now Casey Ingram. So we are busy. Um, now, mind you, again, we, are, we have other jobs and we have family, so it can be hard to squeeze everything in as quickly as people would like to see it happen. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a lot of passionate people on our page oh, yeah. that follow and they want meetings, you know, so it can be really, really hard to fit so many meetings in such little, you know, we only have so many hours in the day. <laughs> It's, so it's, true. it's so true. it's an ever lengthening list that we're trying to accommodate everybody. Mm. And folks, it really it takes a village to do this. So please reach out to these girls. Quit messing with Jensen and uh, Facebook ladies, not girls. Um, <laughs> they, they really are working harder. They're absolutely right. Everybody's working on volunteer time and hours and uh, somebody has to spearhead it and it, you fell into it. Kiki, you started this. <laughs> Kiki was so, the igniter. So you, um, you know, but when you get involved with it, so you get very pas and passionate. And folks, for you at home, it's so important to get involved. Reach out and do what you can to help to help alleviate them. My goodness, this one's going to be having another little baby in January, so <laughs> time is going to get tied up. But but the fight is going to continue. This isn't going to be a short process. Mm -hmm. And uh, River Light, I, I am going to have them on there invited. I think it's really important to have that conversation. So I hope that happens sooner rather than later for you, uh, ladies, because it's it's important. Uh, I would hope that the developer would want to try and, and bring in your ideas and make it work for everybody. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So, um, but with that. 
you had, a, again, I want you to talk about your event that's coming up in October, because that sounds like a lot of fun, everybody. If yeah. you want something that's fun and a little bit Halloween-y come, yeah, coming exactly. up. Yeah, exactly, right, right before Halloween. It's the Friday we're right before really Halloween. Really it's a word, excited. Halloween. Uh -huh. We're really <laughs> excited. We got together with Miss Joyce. Um, she is one of the local historians mm -hmm. at the church, and she's so knowledgeable, and she's such an amazing person. She's so informative. She is, yeah. And uh, this was actually Kiki's idea, because Kiki just loves history. <laughs> um, so, history. <laughs> All right, historian coming mm -hmm. up. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So, Kiki. So, I came up with the idea to do uh, the historic pioneer sip and stroll, because I feel like so many of the community members love history, but I don't think they know that these historians are buried here in our town. Yes. I mean, we didn't even know. No, we had we no went idea. We met with Joyce. <laughs> yeah. um, we're meeting with quite an array of people right now. Like she said, the environmentalists, historians. We're just trying yes. to be as well-rounded as possible. And when we met with Joyce, she gave us this book that explained everyone who is buried there. And I said, we have to do something here. So folks, and, that's going to be a lot of fun. When oh, yeah. is that? That is October 27th uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. October 27th. Quit messing with Jensen. Make sure you join their Facebook page. Uh, Jim Urillo, two amazing women bringing so much to light. So you guys are doing so much for the community. Nicole Perry Watson, imagine that parking issue. Sounds just like our friend Mr. Crowley in Salerno. <laughs> it's amazing how a lot of these issues are, are similar, yet they're a little different, and all the communities have their own special, unique character to them. Mm -hmm. and, and it's wonderful to help protect those things. And uh, folks, again, Quit messing with Jensen. So important to join their Facebook page. Join the cause. You can reach out to these ladies through the Facebook page. I did, and they reached right out to me uh, as, when I invited them on the show. Takes a village. Everybody get involved. You know, I wish everybody the best of luck at Jensen Beach and Port Salerno. Uh, I think it's important for these developers. I, I know these properties are going to get developed, and you can say that, but reach out and find out what your local community, what makes it special, what makes it unique, and why the people that have grown up here for decades and generations love it. Mm -hmm. and that's really yeah. what it's about. Yep. And I just want to give a big, huge thanks to Angie and Steve. Uh, yes. There are other organizers for everything, and they help us so much, and we could not do this yeah, without them. Yeah, Angie is quite the marketer and social media expert mm -hmm. and she's she's amazing our page would not be running well and sufficiently without her and unfortunately she couldn't make it today because she has a nine to five job um, so that was that was sad on our part but the community knows her well so <laughs> that's what it's about folks we got just a couple seconds uh, next I'm going to be uh, having uh, Gigi Santum with the four C's but ladies thank you so much quit messing with Jensen good luck with you and uh, I appreciate you coming on today it's been very yeah, informative thank you. thank you for having us